So guys, today we're going to be going over how to survive Alaska in the season of spring. So let's get started. So the reason why I'm covering spring in this first part is not only because it is spring, but spring as far as the season goes in Alaska. A lot of people think that spring is pretty easy, but especially in the beginning, like the early part of spring, it can actually be very dangerous. Because what happens in spring here is we experience something called breakup. And so what that means is because we never lose our snow during the winter, we pretty much get this one partial early part of spring season called breakup where all this snow melts and it all forms lots of seasonal drainages and rivers, or not really rivers, seasonal streams, seasonal ponds and things like that. And so this can actually be very dangerous, like I said, especially during the early part of spring because many of the, most of the time, the temperature during the night will still drop well below freezing. And so while it may be 50 above during the day and it may be melting off during the day, it'll still get very cold at night. And if your gear is soaked from walking through all these wetlands during the day and you wait or you overnight with all that wet gear, it's all going to freeze. So you have to be super careful in spring because unlike winter, where winter it's actually surprisingly hard unless you fall into water, it's actually surprisingly hard to get like soaking wet because the snow really, it has a hard time converting instantly to water from snow. So it's actually pretty easy to stay dry in the winter and of course in the summer, but during the spring especially, it's very, very easy to get wet. And like I said, especially during the early spring, it's very critical that you don't get wet because it can freeze over and cause you a lot of damage, if not kill you. And in fact, for many of you old school survivalists or survival channel or TV show watchers, uh, there was this show where Michael Hawk and his wife, they used to do survival all the time. And they actually came up to Alaska during the early part of spring and they were never able to finish their outing because they got so cold due to the fact that they got too wet. So it definitely is true that the early spring especially, but even the later part of spring where we are now, it can still be quite lethal and you have to take a lot of precautionary measures. So today we're going to be going over those precautionary measures of what you need to do to be prepared for these. As well guys, almost forgot, before we get started here, don't forget to comment, like, share, and if you're not already, please subscribe for more awesome and original Alaskan bushcrafting and survival. One of the very most common things you'll find in the spring, especially during the later part of spring where we are now. This is a seasonal stream. Now this probably won't be here all year, but this is what a seasonal stream can definitely look like. They're very large, obviously. This is about 10 feet, if not more, in length. There's no way I could easily span this piece, especially here, and once again, this can be a very large danger because this can easily soak a lot of your gear. Now this is a little bit more obvious, you're not going to accidentally soak yourself here as you can in some other things I'll show you, but this can present a very large problem because oftentimes on maps, maps if you're following a trail, summer, this may go right over a trail and so you may have to find a new way. Now luckily seasonal streams, as I'm going to show you guys here in a little bit, they can be pretty easily bypassed because generally with a seasonal stream, they're pretty small because after all they are seasonal. So generally they aren't some huge like stream that's non-seasonal. Uh, generally they have a pretty close end to wherever you find them. However, you don't want to necessarily just try and go right. So across. now let's look into some ways that you can actually cross a seasonal stream. So first off, this is obviously not a place that you want to cross the seasonal stream. This is very close to a lake. You guys probably can't see the lake. It's over here but it's very close to the lake, and so this is pretty much the mouth of this seasonal stream running into the lake. So this is obviously gonna be pretty big and where you definitely do not want to cross place it. to cross this seasonal stream. And we're not actually that much further away from it, but this is a far better place to cross. Now if you guys can notice, there's this kind of midland here, and this won't be with every seasonal stream. This one just so happens, lucky enough, there are some areas where there's little bars, and you guys can see these are pretty dry. But if you don't have these bars, 
please do not cross a seasonal stream. And one thing in Alaska that will look really fooling, and I'll do some close-up work to show you guys. is that this stream, it looks really, really shallow. Like this does not look that deep. But one of the problems in Alaska with streams like this is they're often far deeper than you'd think. Because most land, especially the land we're on right now, has permafrost, what that means is, is that the water, or the ground under it's permanently frozen, but above that is a kind of moss. And I'm even on it right now. And it's a really squishy land. So what will happen is the water will flow over this squishy land because obviously it can't put enough weight on it. But when you step down, you're gonna step down into squishy land and sink into this, thus raising the level of the water effectively higher. Another thing, and this stream is particularly uh, good at showing it because this is once again pasture lands, is that there's a lot of matted grass and so the river is flowing over that matted grass and so in some areas like back over there it looks like you can legitimately see the land you know sticking above the water but what will happen is the moment you step onto that grass is that's just grass floating above water so as you step down you're actually going to sink into the water so be very careful when crossing street, uh, seasonal streams because they look really shallow, uh, but they are not shallow at all. I mean, they aren't super deep, and obviously this is not going to like go up to my waist level, but these are significantly deeper than you'd think. And obviously, if you're trying to not get yourself soaked, the last thing you want to do is get yourself soaked to a higher level. So let's move to another piece here. Hopefully you guys can see, this is where the actual stream is coming from. There's this kind of lake here, and it's a seasonal lake once again. I could show you guys how to bypass this. Um, it would just be going around the potential mound, but this is actually private property over here, so unfortunately I can't bypass it to show you guys. But obviously in a survival situation, private property doesn't really matter. So if that wasn't private property or if this was a survival situation, you could just bypass this seasonal stream and go up around and over. That would definitely be a longer route than just seeing what I did there. But once again, it's a far safer method. And once again, even when I do my hopping stuff, when I hop from that middle to hopping over, there's still an inherent danger that I could miss or that that bar might not be as structurally sound as it once was and I could soak myself. So that's definitely more of a last resort. If you have to hop onto those bars then hop over, definitely do it if that's what you have to do. But by all means, if you can bypass this stream altogether, that's going to be by and large the safest, way safest method you can do. So anyways guys, now let's take a look at some more water guys, dangers. we're here at another water danger. Now for most of you guys, you were probably like, obviously, I'm not going to go hop in a, you know, seasonal, even a seasonal stream. But I was just pointing out some of the dangers that can definitely be there. Now this is more of one, and actually one that I've made mistakes on a handful of times. And this is an area, this one, is essentially where it looks like there's just a little bit of water here and on the camera i hope it does a pretty good job showing there's just really just a little bit of water here just a little bit but actually once again going back to that grass since we're in pasture lands what will often happen to lakes like you guys can see there's a little bit of a lake hope you can see it back there there's a little bit of a lake back there and what will happen is that the water will actually flow through the grasslands the pasture lands and so while it may look like there's only about an inch of water here, this is actually, the water is essentially bringing up the grass to the surface so that it looks really shallow. But if you were to actually step in this, there's actually probably three to four inches of water here. Once again, this combined with that whole mushy effect or mushy effect of the permafrost moss uh, will definitely make it around five inches when you step into this and like i said this is something that will definitely trip a lot of people up because this looks very shallow but it is actually quite deep so and they can even be deeper in fact there's one actually behind the camera and over this little mound that's actually a lot deeper and it looks super shallow so definitely be careful whenever coming up to a land like this 
you want to always look for things like dry grass. You guys can see here this really, you know, uh, kind of tan grass. This is a really good indicator of solid ground. And so when walking in pasture lands that are wet like this seasonally, you want to try and look for this kind of tannish grass because this means it's green, absolutely green. When you see really dark colored grass like this, it means it's very hydrated. And that means that there's often a lot of water underneath it. And that this, this grass here is actually super soaked. So once again, when walking in these areas, you want to try and walk more towards this stuff. And in fact, you can cross water like this if you can find mounds that are like this dry stuff. Essentially just dry mounds of grass like this because there are sometimes just mounds of grass you can walk on top of. So that is a way that you can bypass some of this stuff. But once again, be super careful when doing that because you never know the structural stability of these mounds and you don't want to fall into this. So this is probably one of the largest So things. guys, lastly with this how to survive spring is let's just say you do get wet. Try your hardest. You will likely, even I'm a little wet on the outside of my boots, but if you do get really wet, like really truly wet, the best thing you can do is to keep moving, especially if you know where there's a house or if you know where there's safety, try and keep walking to that position. But even if you don't, one of the best things you can do is keep moving. Even if it's just legitimately walking in a circle or walking in place, one of the best things you can do, especially if your feet are soaked, is to keep them moving. And what this will allow is that if your body's moving, it's going to be producing heat and it's going to be pumping hot blood to the parts of the body that feel cold. So if your feet begin to feel cold, your body, if it's moving, will begin to pump warm blood to your feet. So one of the most important things, like I said, if you do end up soaking your feet or, you know, your legs, keep moving and if you have to stop if you have to stop for the night shed all of the wet clothes because it's very very important that they're not close to your body at all and if you can try and dry them out by a fire but if nothing else shed them from your body because while it may be cold out if it's like say 38 and you're thinking it wouldn't make any sense to take off your pants if your pants are soaked they're actually going to be worse than that 38 above. So you want to try and shed any wet clothes or during the day keep active and keep moving so that your body can continue to make heat and pump warm blood to those areas. So that is the most important thing if you do get soaked. Do not stay in one place or do not just settle down, try and sit down, try and Okay guys, hopefully you enjoyed that nice and pretty quick look at what not to do and what to do in the spring of Alaska. Now keep in mind, this isn't a comprehensive survival tutorial on everything you need to do in a survival situation because many of the, many of the things like fire starting and shelter building are the same across the board and I have other videos going into more comprehensive details about how to build shelters, how to start fires. So if you want to see that, you know, you can either look that up on your own in other YouTube videos or you can see my own videos on how to do some of that. But this was essentially the basics to moving around and how to not uh, and how to survive in Alaska in the spring because oftentimes it's not just ha not having a fire or not having a shelter or not having a few of those things that kills. Oftentimes it can be just having soaked clothes for not knowing how to move or making mistakes out in the field or even in the woods, uh, especially due to water because the water can cool you down so fast. And once again, in early spring, it'll actually freeze. So you do not want that at all. So anyways guys, that was really the purpose behind this video is to show you guys the different dangers around springtime. So anyways guys, as always, that's it for now. I'm out.